Yeah. So what are we here for, Cal? I don't know. I, you know, well, we're clearly we're here uh, to dance to the yeah. music. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. Um, they didn't really give us a lot of background on what we were supposed to present. So we put together a couple slides this morning. We'll, we'll get through it, see how it goes. Uh, but I want to introduce Cal Visa. Uh, he's our product manager for our private SaaS edition product. Um, and that's a lot about what we're going to be talking about today, both the product side as well as some of the technology that goes into it. Um, Cal is <laughs> quite a dancer, apparently. And we don't want him to get onto a dance floor because I'm told that he will twerk. <laughs> So we have to be careful. It's supposed to be a secret. <laughs> All right. Um, Cal has been uh, an engineering manager, a business analyst, um, product manager, and a bunch of other roles uh, in a variety of companies. And most recently, he ran the DevTools group at Walmart Labs, which, quite frankly, is one of the most exciting things that I have seen in a while. So not counting PSE. Thank you. All right. And, you're up. and now let me introduce our fearless engineering manager, John Pampuch. Thank you. And uh, oh yeah, thank you, thank you. Oh, you and, wait, is any of my staff in here? Are you guys <laughs> applauding? <No>. I'm <laughs> just curious. You know, it is performance review time. Right. So, <laughs> right. Speaking of performance review, looks like you've got some high 60s as your golf score, Cal. Uh, but. Let's see. No, actually, that's your bowling score. That's my okay. bowling okay. score, okay. not right. my golf score. Okay. All right. Cool. Great. That's what I thought, John. Yeah. Okay. That's a little more like it. So John and I are both uh, fairly... Well, John is much nearer than I am here at CloudBees. I joined CloudBees uh, about a year ago. And um, so, as John said, I'm the product manager for the product uh, which we'll talk about, which is the private SaaS edition. We launched that product um, end of February, early March this year. And uh, yeah, we we're super excited uh, to talk about it. It's, it's been doing great in the marketplace. Uh, we'll talk more about that in detail. Um, John, uh, just a quick, uh, besides the small introduction, when did you join CloudBee? I joined June 13th uh, this year, just a couple months ago. And uh, it's been a blast the whole time. Uh, if anybody is uh, interested in uh, DevOps, which I imagine a lot of you are, you should look us up. It's a cool place to be. Yep. Okay. Right. So with that, we'll get started. Um, so let us talk about the topics that uh, we're going to cover in the presentation. So the first topic that we'll talk about is why should organizations inv invest in CI and CD? Um, you know, given that this is the uh, Jenkins World Conference, you know, we, you know, we're talking a lot about CI and CD. Uh, many of you are here today to probably understand, you know, some of the, you know, developments in the CI CD space. So we want to talk about, you know, why should organizations invest in, 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 in CI and CD. Uh, followed by an introduction of uh, CloudBees Jenkins Platform Private SaaS Edition. We'll just call it PSE for short because it's quite a long name. Um, and then we'll talk about what sets this product apart from its competition, right? So what are we super excited about to share with you guys, uh, both uh, from a current capability that's, that's there in the product and what's coming uh, in the near future. And finally, we'll close it out with, uh, you know, key takeaways. Um, so let me hand off the first segment to John, who's going to talk about mm -hmm. why organizations should invest in CI and CD. So are you going to drive the slides? Because they uh, told me to sure. stay away from yeah. the mic. Yeah. 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 And I would say otherwise, what I want you to do is to go take pictures of the audience because I think you know this is cool. I want something <laughs> to send to my mom. Right. All right. So so why should we invest? Uh, you guys have heard this story before. Software is eating the world. Uh, you saw this morning in the keynote how you know eighty percent of the uh, Fortune five hundred or Fortune five rather are. Uh, um, software companies. It's changing everything. Um, I, some of you may be as old as I am and remember back to 1986 when we made floppy disks or 96 when we made CDs. Things have changed a lot since then. You know, in 86, 96, things were in many ways simpler. Maybe they were harder in other ways, but um, then we started getting to cloud-based deployment, and now a lot of times we're just deploying directly to the cloud. Uh, we need to do this faster. Um, and 
it's a, you know, there are a lot of complications in doing this. We need repeatable, reliable builds. We need uh, meaningful insight into what's happening. Um, yes, software quality, frequency of releases, developer productivity, all these things. I have a terrible time, by the way. I want to read the slides to you, which is why we've taken and put a lot of pictures in. That way I can't read them to you. Um, unfortunately, my phone stopped working, so I can't see my notes, but that's all right. We'll figure that out. Um, time from code to check-in to delivery can be really enormous, and people are trying to shrink that, and we'll talk a bit about that. And then uh, manual effort, a lot of uh, things around everything from testing to deployment to you know, every step along the way. So, so automation is the key. Yeah, automation is the key. Well, let's keep going. So this is what we used to do, right? In 2000 or thereabouts, maybe it was 1900. A bunch of people did a bunch of changes. They build it, test it, and over a period of about a year, sometimes more, sometimes less, you deliver a, a product. Now, we want to be at a point where we can deliver in an hour. We make a change, we meet a customer requirement, and bits are available. But it's complicated because we might be interacting with a, a database or another external service or a CDN or uh, we have to deploy to some front end or back end components. Um, not to mention all of, you know, they all have to work, so we want to test all of that stuff. So what we're going to be talking about today is how to make that feasible and do it in an hour. And part of that is about scale. And you saw this morning, uh, the product we're talking about, you know, we can get to uh, hundreds of VMs and thousands of masters and tens of thousands of executors building uh, across your whole company. Um, you can do this yourself. Uh, we're going to talk about all the technology that goes into this. It, it is, is mostly available as open source components, things like Mesos and Marathon and so forth. And they're great tools. But if you build it yourself, you get the opportunity to support it, to maintain it, to maintain security on it, to uh, update it. And you know, you'll be the hero for the first seven months. And then after that, you just have this big albatross around your neck. Yeah, and uh, you know, I spent quite a bit of time back at Walmart Labs where you know we rolled a similar solution. And you know, when I was talking to the CloudBees folks, you know, to you know before I joined here, uh, as we were talking about you know what it took to build a solution that came close to the private SaaS edition, um, it took a lot of time. You know, I've got Brian here from my you know previous team there. Um, so we, you know, we took a huge team, a lot of time and effort, uh, and you know, just the amount of operational costs just to keep it running, um, you know, hardware costs, you know, blood, sweat, and tears that goes into it, uh, and you know, it could take you, you know, 12 to 18 months, right, to really get a super large, scalable, highly resilient system. We're talking about systems that can self-heal, where. You know, your team can, you know, sleep peacefully at, at night, and if there's a problem in, the, in, the, in your CD cluster, the system should automatically take care of itself, right? So you don't want the three in the morning calls. I, I, I've certainly got quite a few of those. <laughs> I didn't appreciate that. I'm yeah. sure you did, too. Uh, oh, yeah. So, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sure many of you got that as well, right? So we want, so with PSE, that's the, that's the place we are uh, trying to get to, right? We're trying to get to this highly scalable, resilient, self-healing uh, product that uh, we'll talk about fairly soon. Um, so I'm Don't, going to move to the next slide. Yeah, so the thing about it is it's not just one thing. You really have to integrate it with cluster management. You have to integrate it with user authentication, RBAC, things like that. Um, you have mobile deployments. We've got to do that. And this is one of the things that PSC is going to bring. Is that? Where's the? I don't know. Where someone that's blowing coming. a flute or something? Yeah. Okay. Oh, he wants me to move farther away from the mic. Okay. That's good, because then I can read the slides better. Um, so all of these pieces have to be integrated in your deployment solution. Um, and that's part of what we deliver as part of the uh, private SaaS edition. And at, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Cal. Thank you, John. Yep. So I'm going to quickly go over uh, and present uh, you know, the private SaaS edition. Um, 
Who here has heard of the of the private SaaS edition before? Yep, Michael, thank you. <laughs> okay. A few of you. Okay, all right, cool. And then thank you for coming and uh, attending the talk. I'm sure, uh, well, certainly our hope is that you'll feel excited about the product and uh, you'll walk away understanding, having a better understanding of what this does. Um, so private SaaS edition at a glance. Um, let me talk about who, you know, why we built this solution, right? Like, what is this, you know, who's going to get the maximum bang for the buck with this product? So, um, you know, uh, all of you are obviously familiar with Jenkins. Um, with Jenkins, Jenkins is a fantastic solution for running your, um, you know, your, your CI and CD workloads. However, trying to scale Jenkins to the cloud uh, can be very cumbersome. I can see some nodding heads. Um, so... Uh, and that's primarily the reason why we decided to embark, go down the path of building the private SaaS edition. So, so private SaaS edition essentially takes um, our CloudBeast Jenkins platform, which is essentially enterprise plugins that sit on top of core Jenkins. So we're taking that enterprise Jenkins product and we're scaling that natively to the cloud. Okay? And we're, we're hitting three key personas with this product. So I'm going to start at the bottom left. Um, so the first persona that we're targeting with the product is what, what I call as the shared engineering services team. So this was kind of like my previous team at Walmart. Uh, many of you here, I think, also kind of belong to that team. So this is the team that's responsible for providing CD solutions to your organization. So developer productivity tools are part of that, right? So GitHub, you know, Artifactory, or Nexus, you've got Jenkins, you've got other tools that kind of belong fall into that sphere, right? So there's, there's a team that um, is responsible for getting that done. So for this team and for this, you know, for a persona and from that team, uh, the private SaaS edition gives you a, a single click capability to set up a Jenkins cluster uh, in a matter of minutes on your private cloud, okay? So that's the key benefit for uh, the shared services person. And, you know, it comes with monitoring and alerting and analytics and all the good stuff. Uh, to help that person assess the, you know, the health of the cluster and all that stuff. And I'll get into that in a bit. Uh, the second persona uh, that, the, you know, the private SaaS edition uh, would help is what I call as the project-level Jenkins admin. So say you're a Dell and you've got multiple departments within the organization. Um, each department uh, wants to have their own uh, plugins in Jenkins, right? So... Um, so, so that's essentially that second persona, which is the team level or department level Jenkins admin um, who can, you know, essentially set up their own master. So I, I need my own master. I don't want to use the shared one. Okay, great. PSE will let you spin up your own master. You can install your own plugins, all that good stuff, completely multi-tenanted. You're isolated from another team. So they can't clobber you. You can't clobber them. Uh, fantastic, right? So win-win solution. Uh, the third key persona that um, uh, PSE targets is developers and, uh, you know, I should say, you know, folks in engineering. Um, so these are the folks who are essentially putting together your continuous delivery pipelines, right? So they're basically checking in code. They want a very, you know, uh, a seamless, scalable, resilient, highly available system to handle the workload that they're pushing to the cluster, right? So these are the three key personas. Um, uh, so now we'll get into just a few layers of, I don't want to get too deep into the diagram because John's going to cover the same thing in the, on the technology side. Uh, but, you know, I, I want to just talk about a few key pieces in PSE. Um, so, uh, you know, starting at the bottom, we've got a control plane, which essentially controls how to set up your cluster on your private cloud. Uh, the private SaaS edition today supports uh, two private cloud uh, platforms. Uh, so we support uh, Red Hat OpenStack and um, AWS. Um, so the con control tier essentially sets up the cluster on either of these two deployment targets that you would choose, right? So the shared services person would download the private SaaS edition onto, the, you know, onto a box, and they would then say, you know what, I want to deploy my product on AWS, or I want to deploy my product on... OpenStack, um, and then they would configure it and all that good stuff, right? So that's what the control tier would do. Um, the next tier that I want to call out is what I call as the resource management tier, uh, and this is basically the one that's really looking at scale, right? So 
you know, as more workload comes into my Jenkins cluster, how do I, you know, scale up and down? You know, so that's what the resource tier would do. Uh, and finally, we've got our storage tier, um, and this is basically, you know, uh, you know, we, we snapshot all your, uh, you know, all the build jobs and Jenkins home config and all that stuff gets uh, snapshotted onto your storage, so that if your cluster were to crash, you know, you could very easily recover the state prior to the ca crash in a matter of minutes. And we'll talk about that too. We actually encountered that a few times uh, in the recent past. So before he moves on, uh, it's gone. I oh. just I wanted to say okay. everybody remember this slide because we're going to come back to it and I'll ask you quote. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It'll be a quiz. It'll be a quiz. Okay, so um, um, Koske, I think all of you know Koske. Uh, he loves to talk about pets versus cattle mentality with private SaaS edition, right? So um, pets are machines that you know, you know them by name, you, you know, you, you, you really love them, you know, if they crash, you're going to feel really miserable that, oh my God, my machine died, what am I going to do? Um, many, many organizations today have set up their Jenkins clusters on these static bare metals, and, um, you know, and they're really suffering as a result, because if that server crashes, you're kind of scrambling to find out, oh my God, how am I going to fix this? How am I, I'm, I'm, I'm having an outage right now. Uh, my customers are, are killing me. They need me to fix this right now, right? So we're moving from a pets model to a cattle model. What that means is in PSE, um, almost everything, so both Jenkins, you know, masters, agents, our control, you know, operation center, everything runs as a Docker container on your private cloud. So even if we lose a container, let's say, uh, our resource management tier would automatically fail over and, and, and spin up another um, you know, another container that looks just like the one that just died in a matter of seconds, right? So, um, so that's exactly what I mean by the pets versus cattle mentality. Um, I know I'm going too fast, so tell me, stop it, stop me if you think that I'm we're going too fast, okay? <laughs> um, I want to talk about the key value proposition of the product. Uh, three key things that I want to highlight here. Um, one is the first one is uh, provision. Your your CD cluster in a matter of minutes, um, and uh, you know that's 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 you know, you'll see that actually you know we'll talk about that in more detail. So essentially, that's that's this is the key thing, right? You're, you're going from zero to production in a matter of minutes. Essentially, that's what the private SaaS edition uh, product can give to you, right? So you're essentially downloading the bits, you run a single command, and boom, a matter of minutes, you're 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 essentially set up. How many of you saw Sasha's keynote demo this morning? Few of you, okay. Um, so, and you saw that it's, it's a, you know you saw Sasha essentially firing up a you know opening up a you know terminal window, pulling up a config file, entering a bunch of stuff, and then hitting a command, boom, set up on on AWS, right? So that's that's a that's a pretty cool thing that uh, we're proud of. Um, second thing is uh, you know scale scalability, right? So. Uh, you know, we the, the private SaaS edition cluster can grow as your workload grows, right? So you can expand and shrink uh, at will, um, you know, on your on your private cloud. Um, lastly, uh, you know, essentially this is this is all about freeing up time for your developers to deliver software faster and with higher quality, right? Um, your, uh, you know, the shared services persona's key goal is to enable your customers to deliver software faster and with higher quality. Right, so uh, these are the three key value props that um, I wanted to call out uh, on these slides. Um, uh, you know, I want to, you know, given that we launched the private SaaS edition just about six months ago, um, you know, I'm, I'm super excited to share that you know we've got very strong demand in the marketplace. We've signed a whole bunch of customers, uh, you know, across geographic locations all over the world. Um, so very very excited, uh, you know. And we've been mm -hmm. cranking away quite a bit uh, in, in, in delivering features and, and listening to customer feedback. We've got fantastic feedback uh, from all our customers and prospects. So thank you. Please keep that feedback coming. Um, so again, very excited with uh, the current state of the product. Um, now I want to move to uh, what sets the product apart from um, its competition. Right. So. Um, one really cool feature in the private SaaS edition, and, and you, you know, the, the, this is the Jenkins Operations Center. And the Jenkins Operations Center for, you know, uh, how many of you are familiar with the CloudBees Jenkins platform? Okay. 
few of you. Yep. So if you're familiar with that, you know, obviously you know what the Jenkins Operations Center is, but for those who are not, um, think of the Jenkins Operations Center as um, your master of masters, if you will, right? So this is the one that is essentially uh, keeping track of your cluster, right? How many masters are, uh, you know, are in your cluster? You know, what are your uh, agents doing? Uh, it gives you the ability to um, do things like, you know, set up SSO and role-based access control. Uh, you could also configure, uh, you know, a set of uh, shared, uh, you know, Jenkins agents that you can connect to the Jenkins Operations Center, uh, and you can fire off your workload onto the shared, uh, you know, pool of agents. So all that, you know, uh, all those capabilities are, are, you know, are something that's baked into the Jenkins Operations Center. Um, the next uh, cool feature that, um, you know, I want to call out in, in Private SaaS Edition is uh, the product lets you scale your workload in minutes. Again, I, I think I've, I've repeated that a few times, but this, uh, you know, we don't have time today to show you a demo in action, but please definitely do look us up. We're there in the booth. Uh, happy to do a demo, uh, and, we can sh and you can see how insanely easy it is to scale your workload. Um, you know, just run a command, boom, you can, you can expand to whatever size you want. Um, and, um, you know, tied up, you know, to teeing up from the previous slide, uh, size matters. So, you know, from this morning, you know, when, when Sasha did the keynote, uh, we essentially showed how easy it is to scale PSE. So this uh, screenshot is from the demo uh, that we did this morning. Uh, well, it's well, actually a couple of days old. It's a couple of days old, right. Because right. you'll so, notice the number of executors right. wasn't up right. very high yet. Exactly. Yeah. So we slowly, you know, over, you know we, we got the executors to get to about 10,000 jobs. Uh, and then we got the cluster up to 2,000 masters. Um, and we actually, as of right now, we've got about 300-odd VMs that's being managed by PSE. Um, so this is, you know, my, my point here is that PSE is can scale no matter what your workload size is, sizes, right? So, but, small but to workloads be, to, to be clear, yeah. yeah, small workloads are well within its scope as well. Yep. You know, if you have ten masters, uh, ten work groups, that's a perfectly reasonable deployment, yep. um, and one that we would recommend highly. Yep, absolutely, absolutely, Ex exactly. So this is, you know, from small to large, PSE can scale uh, very, very easily, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, again, the, the key thing I want to call out here is to keep in mind what PSE supports today so we can scale, you know, on, you know, today we support AWS and OpenStack, so just keep that in mind. Um, resiliency, uh, I talked about this, the self-healing nature of the product. So, again, one of the cool things in the product right now is, uh, you know, you've set up this large cluster, you've got this, you know, you've got your teams cranking away on the cluster, and suddenly, you know, the unexpected happens and your ma master crashes, right? So uh, today, you know, that can be very, very painful because, you know, uh, that's an outage for, uh, for that team or a set of teams. Um, and, um, you, know, uh, you know, all the jobs that were running, uh, that were attached to the master, you're going to have to restart them and all that stuff. Well, with PSE, we have taken away, you know, a whole bunch of pain. Um, so resiliency is baked in, right? We use Mesos and Marathon underneath the covers. Um, so if a container were to die, Marathon will essentially, you know, schedule another container instantaneously. And in fact, this morning, when you saw Sasha do the resiliency test, um, I don't know if you guys remembered, but when we pulled the plug on a few containers, uh, you saw the greens turn to yellow. Well, you know what? There was actually a red state that you never saw because Marathon and you know was so fast in essentially moving from a red to a yellow state, right? So red means that it's not provisioned. The container has not been provisioned yet. But Marathon did it so fast where the container came up instantaneously. As soon as it went down, in a second boom, the container came back up. It, that's what, you know changed the state to yellow, and then from that point, it was trying to connect back to the operation center, right? So. Uh, Given that we, um, you know, uh, we have a, a, a small story that we want to talk about in a second uh, about resiliency, but before I get to that, I want to talk about the automated backups feature uh, that's baked into the product. So, again, if you get into a situation where it's not just your masters that are dying, but let's say your entire cluster gets barked, right? Uh, and it happened to us, and we'll talk about that. 
um, you can, in a, in a, within an hour or two, essentially you can restore your entire cluster, same state, everything, uh, just like the way it was, uh, you know, and, and this, is, this is fantastic because we hit this at least three times while, you know, in, in, in reaching this large cluster for, you know, for the demo, right? So it's happened to us a few times. Each time, within an hour or two, we got the cluster back up and running. So fantastic. So for your disaster recovery scenarios, this is an awesome feature, in my opinion. Um, so, so, Cal, what, yep. you know, we, we, we had some challenges. We did, and that's exactly the next slide. Right. So... So uh, you want to we, talk about that? Yeah. So all summer we had been working, testing, and building the uh, PSC product, and we had been testing with clusters, you know, with 100, 200 masters, because we thought that was a pretty reasonable scale for a lot of companies. And we were planning on doing a demo with 200 masters because we thought that was pretty good sized. Uh, only somebody had the good idea <laughs> of going to 2,000 masters um, and 10,000 uh, executors. Um, well, so here we are chugging along, and we're trying to spin up this cluster, so get it bigger. Let's yeah. pause on that for a second, right? Yeah. Um, I want to talk about, so I don't want you guys to think that this is just a number porn thing here, right? So it's not that. That's true. Uh, the reason why we are talking about numbers here is because it's less about the number of masters. Think of it in terms of how many projects you have in your organization. Um, you know, from, you know, uh, I see, you know, folks from some l really large companies here um, you know, you can think of, like, at any given point in time, you've got a couple of thousand projects, right? These are developers, like, you know, kind of, churn, you, know, you know, churning away code. You've got 2,000 projects checked into GitHub. So think of each project, you know, as a master, right? You could, that's the model we're trying to get to, right? Each project essentially is its own master. I know I see Raghu over there from eBay. That's, you know, that's the model that you guys follow. Uh, so it's, a, it's, a, it's the model that I think the industry is kind of moving towards, right, where... You know, each project gets their own CI workspace, CI CD workspace. That's what we're trying to show, right? Um, no matter what your size is, if you've got a couple of thousand projects at any, any given point in time, each one is essentially, you know, uh, churning out a whole bunch of jobs. Well, PSE can handle that as well, right? And that's why, you know, I wanted to get to that size to show, right. you know, m most of you here assemble that we can get there. Right? Don't let him fool you, though. What it really comes down to is he heard somebody else had, like, 1,900 masters <laughs> running. So we had to get to 2,000. Right. Um, so here we are. You know, we're starting at 200, and we're trying to crank it up. And, you know, AWS has some constraints. It's a little slow sometimes when you want to do a lot of stuff. Um, so we, we got to about 700 masters, and our Elasticsearch infrastructure fell over. Um, it just needed some tuning. We had to adjust it a little bit. But... It just, you know, it couldn't keep up. The, the rate of data coming out of the build uh, executors was overwhelming to the Elasticsearch as it was configured. So that was the first thing we ran into. And then at about 1,400, we ran into a problem with Marathon. Um, I'm, I'm looking at someone at, from Mesosphere because I thought they might want to hear this. <laughs> uh, Marathon uh, tries to store a lot of information in Zookeeper, uh, a lot of the state, and it was too big for Zookeeper to handle. And fortunately, Zookeeper can be configured, and it could grow, and that was fine. But again, it, it was just one of those things that caused us to fall over. But this wasn't really the worst problem we ran into. Um, so we finally got it to 2,000. Everything was chugging along, running fine. And then Sunday night happened. And on Sunday night, it turns out we learned of a command that we built into the product. It's kind of like rm-rf slash, only this was uh, PSEB's delete-f. Force a delete of everything. And we did. And so our big demo cluster that took us weeks to get running the first time was gone. Um, and, you know, this is a 10 o'clock Sunday night. Demo is supposed to be shown Wednesday morning. Heart attacks ensued and yes. cursing and all that. All that, yes. <laughs> um, but the fabulous part is, at that point, it was easy to bring back. We had this, you know, we've learned a lot, and we've been, we will improve our recovery process. But it took us about three hours. And I think at this point, we could get it down to an hour. We could go from and we zero. Did. The last time we're on, we did. Oh, last time we're out. We could go from zero to 2,000 masters in about an hour. Um, we we're really excited about that. We, you know, in other words, even you know, total ca catastrophe 
is easily recovered. Uh, we think that's a good thing. Yep, and that uh, picture over there essentially is your, you know, essentially got your axe up, you know, you're chopping off your own leg, which is what we did. <laughs> right, we did. <laughs> All right, so uh, moving on. Um, another oh. key feature capability uh, that we think sets the product apart from its competition is um, seamless upgrades, right? So uh, had someone asked me this question a couple of days ago, uh, how do we handle upgrades? Um, you know, you've got this large cluster up in the cloud. You're, you know, it's being used heavily. Uh, you know, if I, you know, how do I upgrade the system without, you know, by, you know, and also, mi you know, minimizing the downtime, right? Well, in, with PSE, we have what's called as in-place upgrades, which is, which is essentially rolling upgrades. So you can essentially roll the upgraded software uh, VM by VM, and and that effectively will, you know, essentially it's going to bring your outage, your planned outage time, you know, extremely, extremely to a very, very small amount, right? Um, and and uh, many of our customers actually love this. Um, so you don't have to now take, you know, big outages and, you know, oh, I need to plan for a time where I need to take down my master, roll out my upgrades, and I need to upgrade my plugins, all that stuff. All that, you know, none of that stuff is now required with, uh, you know, the in-place rolling upgrades uh, in PSE. Um, we are very soon going to have uh, multi-availability zone support. This is for folks who want to run Private SaaS Edition on AWS. Again, this is a very commonly asked uh, feature from uh, prospects and customers. Uh, so essentially, you could now set up your, your PSE cluster across multiple availability, uh, availability zones in a region. Right? So you said that was very soon. Yes. It's in version 1.3, right? 1.4. Oh, it's out. in 1.4. Yes. Okay. Yes, so All that's right. coming out end of the month. So, yep, mm -hmm. by, you know, after that, you should be able to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. um, another cool thing that we have, uh, you know, built into the product is uh, we've got very, very solid monitoring and alerting. So once you've got uh, a PSE cluster up and going, you know, we monitor every single piece of the stack. So right from the infrastructure, which is the VMs that are hosting the containers, uh, to the containers' health, to the, you know, how the masters are performing, how the agents are performing, you know, how and the build are, process. I'm sorry? And the build process. And the build, itself. exactly, I was getting yeah. there. So all your build analytics, all that stuff is monitored, and we've got dashboards where you can see all of that. Um, and, we get, and we have alerting too, so in case something goes wrong, you know, on your VM, say, you know, you've hit your, your, your VM's getting pegged at, uh, let's say, CPU, or your heap, uh, your memory is getting pegged or whatever, uh, you will get alerted right away that, hey, you know what, there's a problem, uh, please jump in and, uh, you know, take care of it, right? Um, I just talked about analytics, and this is something that we're super excited about. Uh, analytics is the hot topic everywhere. Everybody wants to talk about analytics. Uh, we certainly think that we've got very, very meaningful analytics in the product. Um, you know, as, as John just said, right from, you know, build performance, build analytics down to, the VM level, how your VMs are doing, all of that is baked in. So you get dashboards, cool-looking dashboards for all of that. And it integrates with other things like your own Elasticsearch cluster if you choose. Yep. Right. Exactly. Um, so I didn't get a chance to put a piece of text here, but this is, this is my lame attempt at uh, showing your own private Docker registry. So private SaaS edition supports uh, your own private uh, Docker registry. So for those of you who are using Docker heavily, uh, you know, and you're running your own private Docker registry, the private SaaS edition will integrate with that. And you can, you know, have your own custom, you know, Docker images for your Jenkins masters or agents and all that stuff, right? So that's baked into the product. It's pretty seamless. Um, so with that, I am done with the features part. So I want to hand it off to John, who's going to do a deep dive on yeah. technology. So now I get to tell you how you build it yourself. If you want to know. Oh, is that working? Yeah. Oh, you want me to it, no, it's working. Okay. So I think what I might do, though, is turn off the lavalier and just use the that one. All right. Yeah, it's, you know, it's still attached, though. Yeah. That makes it harder. So I said I would come back to this slide. Can you guys hear me OK? OK, good. Closer What's to the mic. I will get closer to the mic. Okay, good. Um, so we talked a little bit about the, the pieces parts here and the people who are involved. 
But I wanted to go and drill in a little deeper in terms of how those pieces are implemented. Um, so, you know, the private cloud infrastructure, it's, we're using off-the-shelf components, OpenStack, AWS, readily available. We have a thin veneer that we build over that to make it a little easier for us to, uh, differenti or to deal with the differentiation between those platforms. We use Terraform to help to do a lot of that, and then we have some of our own work as well. So, um, so John, I yep. there's one thing that I, I forgot, I glossed over while we were talking about, the, when we talked about scale, right? The, 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 the cluster that we showed in the morning, um, we got it to a point where it ran up to two million jobs in a given day. So I know there are some of you here who've uh, asked me that question, hey, we, you know, you talk about scale, we run, you know, millions of jobs in a given day, can, it, can the product scale? The answer is yes. So it's more of yeah. yeah. um, And I don't think that's the upper limit. No. I, I yeah. think that we stopped because yeah. it would take more, cost. yeah, there's cost, a, a lot of factors going into it. But um, anyway, um, so I, like I said, we have the, the, or like Cal said, we have the storage uh, system. I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, resource management tier, that's primarily Mesos and Marathon. Uh, being used to manage all the resources of this cluster. Uh, they're really powerful tools, and we like them a lot. Um, they're doing a lot for us. I will say that we are looking at using alternatives as well, uh, just so that we can plug into other people's solutions, uh, potentially Kubernetes, maybe Singularity in lieu of Marathon, but that's downstream. We need to investigate, and we need to have somebody say, yeah, I want that, so we'll think about that. Um, and then, of course, we use some of our own CloudBees components as well, the Jenkins Operations Center. Um, and we have an internal component we call Castle. Um, and then another component, um, I, I'm having a hard time remembering. Yes? Palace. Okay. Palace, yes, thank you. I'm having a There it is, Palace. So Palace uh, integrates with our scheduling of, with Mesos. Uh, it's essentially Marathon for the build executors. Um, it does all the things that Marathon, or does the things that we need at a Marathon-like tool to do, um, but for executors rather than for the um, uh, uh, masters themselves. Um, we use a uh, Marathon to drive the masters uh, for a variety of reasons, but one of them is just, it's really well suited for it. Um, we also integrate with Docker. Uh, Cal mentioned private uh, Docker registry, although we can connect to the public registry as well. Um, it provides our execution unit for most of our, com well, actually all of our components and potentially your components as well. Um, gives us some build isolation, protects us from uh, things breaking each other. It leaves fewer breadcrumbs. It's really just a, a convenient container, uh, quite literally. Um, gives us nice isolation. Um, it does have its challenges, though. Uh, one is it's really hard to build a Docker container inside a Docker container. Uh, fixing it breaks security. We're, we're working on that. Uh, it's getting better. It does have a few scaling issues. Um, not something you're likely to run into with 200 masters, but you might bump into it with 2,000. Um, and then early versions were challenging to upgrade, but I think we've gotten through that. Um, Elasticsearch provides our analytics and logging service. Um, Live data for our, our system state dashboard, but live data for anything. You know, any part of the system is accessible uh, through Elasticsearch. It manages huge scale logging data. And we, we did 2,000 masters, I think, with seven instances. Um, you know, it's a, it, it, we, we, got to, we, were logging, we were logging about, about a terabyte a day at that size. So, and then mm -hmm. we, we managed to run Elasticsearch just fine, even at that right. scale. And you know, once you have it in Elasticsearch, it becomes really easy to find specific failures of any kind. Um, tuning and scaling, on the other hand, is a little hard. Um, it's not that it's not capable, it's just that Elasticsearch is designed for a huge range of deployments, and getting it right for any particular one is a little challenging. Um, it's hard to find the right parameters. Um, and in particular, we, we use a lot of indices and that made it especially difficult to configure. Um, we would like to use newer versions. We're not using a particularly current version of Elasticsearch, um, but it does introduce some backwards compatibility issues, and we're trying to work through that. So another challenge. And then the last component we build is something called Castle. Uh, it integrates with things like uh, um, 
EBS, uh, Elastic Block Storage. Uh, we use it for doing the logical equivalent of backups through stack, uh, snapshots. This is the tool that allowed us to recover that large cluster uh, so easily. It's because we had current snapshots of everything going on, all saved in EBS quite easily. Um, and uh, if you're not using Amazon, you, we, right now we support NFS on OpenStack. Um, we're interested in knowing what other storage technologies people would be interested in. Uh, we'd like to support others as needed. Um, and then we're up, you know, we're going to just make 5 o'clock, Cal. Good job. Uh, takeaways, so. Yeah, so, uh, so hopefully all of you have a fairly good sense of what the product uh, is about, what it does, what sets it apart from the competition. Key takeaways, uh, you know, that I wanted to kind of, you know, reiterate were, um, so essentially you could set up a private SaaS edition cluster on your private cloud uh, in a matter of minutes, okay? So that's, that's something that we're super proud of. Um, we did that on stage this morning, yeah, just in case right. anybody didn't catch that. Exactly, exactly. Sasha kicked off the script to launch a, a cluster. Uh, so PSC also comes with native multi-tenancy and isolated, I mean, workload isolation that's baked into the product. So again, if you've got multiple organ you know, departments within your organization, each one wants their own master, their own plugins, um, and full control over... Uh, you know, uh, what, what goes into the master, well, PSE does all of that, right? The, the capability is baked right in. Uh, we, you know, we, we talked quite a bit about the self-healing nature of the, of the, of the product. Um, so again, uh, you know, if you've got a, you know, a large cluster, if un unexpected outages occur, um, PSE is capable of handling those um, outages for you, right? And you can spin up, you know, containers as, as necessary. Uh, finally, the last takeaway that I want to call out is with PSE, you can get uh, deep insights into your cluster, right, from infrastructure health to software delivery metrics, right? So, again, this is something that would be very, very useful for the three personas that I called out a while ago. So, with that, we're done uh, with, our, uh, with our presentation. There's a couple of things I want to call out. Uh, Carlos Sanchez, who's a senior engineer from the PSE team, is doing a talk uh, on scaling Jenkins with Docker, Swarm, Kubernetes, or Mesos tomorrow. Uh, and that's at Exhibit Hall C at 2.30 p.m., so please do go see that. Uh, another plug is for Stephen Connolly's talk, um, and that is also tomorrow at 3.45, where he is going to talk about his journey of scaling Jenkins, right? So he's talking about Jenkins itself, how to scale Jenkins to a, you know, a very high uh, level, right? So please do so, attend that so if, talk as well. if you are interested in the DIY approach, um, DIY approach, go to these talks, because they're going to go even deeper into the approaches used and the challenges you're going to run into, and they'll be a lot of fun. Um, you, you will enjoy these talks, because they will they'll drill into the technology a lot. Um, if you're interested in our product, there's the link, and we'll post these slides wherever they get posted, and you'll be able to go directly to the product site. Um, otherwise, uh, sadly, we don't have time for questions because it's 18 seconds past the hour. But if you have any. Thank you. Yep, thank you.